I decided to take another shot at taking this spool valve out uh, without taking the whole valve out of the loader because I'm going into the city to get those parts, uh, get that quad seal that goes on the relief valve. And I'd really like to try and get the ones for the other spool valves if I can. So to loosen this uh, screw, what I did was I uh, got this attachment here and I just held that on and then grabbed onto that with a quarter inch open end wrench and turned it and was able to loosen this screw, which I thought was gonna be a problem to get to. Uh, and now I'm going to uh, do that with all the other ones. You got the two front ones out that way, and now the two back ones, I think I can actually come from the other side with a regular screwdriver and get those out. Well, I got all the four screws off, and this doesn't want to come off all the way. And it's not the cable in the way here. It's actually, it feels like it's being held on by something. I'm wondering if it's this bolt and nut deal on the end here. Might be a problem. Well, I can see when I open this up, I can see the uh, spring assembly that I assumed would be on there, which would keep me from being able to pull the spool out this direction of the valve body. And I've got to get that off. I can't get that off because I believe that's held on by a bolt on the end until I get this cover off and the cover doesn't want to come off. So I think I'm going to have to take this nut off. What worries me is that nut looks like it might be a locking nut for a adjustment in the end there. And I really don't want to disturb that adjustment if it is one, but I don't think I've got much choice. Oh, just great. This turns easily, but it just turns and turns and turns and doesn't, doesn't loosen up or come out, which means whatever that is attached to inside is spinning. And of course I can't hold it because I can't get this cover off. Which makes me think that what you're supposed to do is probably take the lever off on this side, take this cover off, and slide the whole spool valve assembly out this side of the valve body and then disassemble the rest of it on the bench. Which uh, uh, I can't do because the frame is in the way unless I take the whole valve body out which is what I was trying to avoid. Well, that's weird. I just kind of was twisted and pulling on it and the thing popped out. I don't know if it's supposed to do that or if I just made it fall apart in a way I shouldn't have. Oops. Oh, there are little ball bearings in there. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. That's not good. To make matters worse, that spring, oh I see, is a snap ring. It's a snap ring that holds the spring on to the end of this. Wow. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can get my snap ring pliers in there. Well, now I've really gone and done it. I dropped one of the tiny little ball bearings that I saw in there. It, uh, the tip of my screwdriver was a little bit magnetized, and when I was touching around there, it grabbed it and fell down and bounced God knows where. And I may have, actually, when I pulled it out initially, I may have lost one. Don't even know how many are in there. So, now I've got a real pickle. Ah. All right, I've got my snap ring pliers with their little 90 degree fittings on the end there. Let's see if I can't get that snap ring. Oh, another mistake. I knew that spring was under tension, but I had no idea how much. Look how much that spring uncompressed. And with the force of the uncompression, luckily my snap ring just fell right there. But now I can see that that cup, apparently when it's in position, is what holds the little balls in place. So now I can see that there were supposed to be four balls in there originally. I think another one just went flying. So that's not good. 
So I'll use my little magnet to get the last of the balls out. Put that in my little jar here for safekeeping. And I got my snap ring. Same thing with that. And then it looks like one on the other side's gone. And the one on the bottom is gone. So I've got one out of the four. The rest of them are all gone. Okay, I've got the uh, four screws out on this side. So now let's see if you can't get this spool to come out this way. Why is it stopping there? It doesn't look like that ball fell inside. Nope. So the other three little balls are somewhere on the ground over here. Well, I don't see anything obviously broken on this. What's worse is there's really no seals on this thing whatsoever. Which makes this kind of a a bust taking this thing apart. So I just caused myself a bunch of headaches for probably no good reason at all. So it looks like the only seals on the individual spools are, it looks like there's one on a groove right here on this end and then there's a matching one on the groove on this end. So one to keep the fluid from collecting in this cup area and one to keep the fluid from leaking out over here, which judging from the wetness of this whole area, it looks like these have been leaking. So I could pick that out of the groove and get a replacement one. Problem is, boy, getting that new one in on this side wouldn't be too bad, but on this back side here where I've got clearance issues, that could be a trick. I don't even know if I'll be able to get that out. Well, let me try and pick the easy one out first. Well, here's what that seal looks like after I pull it out. It's got a groove on the back side. I didn't notice that until I had gotten it all the way out. I'm pretty sure the groove was facing in. Well, what I can do is I can compare it to the, uh, the other one when I take it out and just be more careful that I note which side is which. It almost looks like there might be a number on there. Is that just dirt? I can't tell. To look at it under magnification to see if there's actually a part number on here. But it looks like a shaft seal, like a rotating shaft seal, without the uh, without the usual little metal carrier. Doesn't look like it's got the spring in there either. Yeah, the grooves they def definitely face in towards the pressure side on these and. Well, I'll tell you, the rubber on these, uh, it's hard like a rock. It doesn't, well, it's getting a little bit better now that I've got it out, but it sure seems stiff. So I'd say that these have been in there for quite a while. Well, looky what I found. Luck would have it, as the balls fell, they slid down that, almost like a ramp there, and then hit the axle down there, and all fell pretty much in the same general area so I actually spotted them. I was gonna go down there with my magnet and search that way but then I actually could see them so I picked them up with the magnet. There's the three, number four I still have so there's the four balls. So, so far so good. 
it's becoming apparent to me there's no way I'm going to be able to put this spool back in and then assemble this with the little balls and everything in there. And that what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to assemble this whole part with the spring and everything on the end and then take the lever off of this end and insert the spool from the back of the valve which I can't do right now because the frame's in the way. But I'm looking at this valve now and I'm thinking, well, if the two bolts are bolted into the bracket, the return line is the only fixed line. In other words, that's a rigid line. All of the other lines, even this main pressure line right here, and I believe the supply line too, and all the lines going down to the loader pipes, uh, they're all flex lines, so I think if I just undo this union right here and unbolt this from the bracket, I could probably twist and move this valve out of the way just enough to slide the spool in from this side when I need to do it. So I think, well, we'll cross that path when we come to it, but I think that's going to be the plan. Well, before I head off to the city in search of those seals, I figured I should take a little peek in my, uh, wear owner's manual that came with the tractor. Ah, it had been a while since I looked through this, so I had forgotten there is nothing in here about the valves, uh, about the spool valves. Basically, this is just about like the plumbing, and there's information in here on the part numbers for the cylinders, which that might come in handy when I go to uh, replace the seals, leaking seals on the boom, um, and stuff like that. But as far as the actual valve body itself where was it there was a basically just a picture of the entire body with a part number for the whole valve body so basically they're assuming that you're just going to get that serviced by where or replace the whole valve body as a complete unit which i can imagine what that must have cost i wonder what it says under trouble analysis recognizing the operational trouble let's see what this says about that well, under all of the little troubles here, the only one that I see that kind of makes sense as far as what I'm experiencing is this chattering. Like, that might be kind of like a chatter, uh, high frequency chatter. <laughs> Insufficient oil level, we know it's not that. Air leak on the suction line, mm, possible. Uh, kinked suction line or inner hose lining ruptured. That's interesting. So what they're saying is that even though the hose might not be ruptured to leak, that internally the hose may have collapsed and uh, it may be causing an obstruction on the suction line. That's interesting. I do have an area of the hose that does have, well, it's almost like a kink to it where it's kind of partially collapsed and that's just because of the way it's, the proximity it is to the frame. I wonder if that could be my problem. But again, if that was the problem, that also is the suction line that feeds the backhoe, and I don't seem to have the problem with the backhoe. It seems to be more isolated to the loader. 